Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today we are going to use those crackle sheets that we made last week and turn them into a beautiful necklace and bracelet. So I've been letting these sheets sit roughly 24 hours and so you might notice that the colours have dulled just a tad because the alcohol ink will sink into the clay and so depending on how long you leave it um, the duller the colours will get and the colours will change as different colours um, sink into the clay and it will just create some really interesting effects but you do need to know that it will change depending on how long you leave it so that's our ginkgo leaf one here is our ancient roots one and our pebble one which is my absolute favorite and now these are all going to be used in a bracelet and I wasn't sure if there was going to be enough there for my pendants as well so I made another pebble one and another ancient roots one and these were using the exact same alcohol inks and the exact same technique and you can see how different they look even though we're using the exact same colors and basically the exact same method it's going to look different each time you use it. So it's good for you to know that and to see that because um, you're never going to be able to recreate the same sheet twice as you can see here. It's going to basically look around the same but it's still going to have slight different shades and things so each one's going to be a surprise. Okay so I want to start with the bracelet first. So we're going to bring over the ginkgo leaf here and I want to trim it roughly in half and this is going to go towards my pendants okay and this pebble the second pebble sheet and ancient roots sheet I am going to leave aside for the pendant too okay and so we're going to have these to work with And I'm going to be using this bracelet blank today. This is the same bracelet blank that I used for this bracelet over here. And so this is the one that I'm going to be using. You can get this off of eBay. There's lots of different bracelet blanks that you get on eBay. And I'll try to leave a link to that bracelet. Um, I might not be able to find the listing again, but I will try and leave a link to the exact one. So what we need to do is we need to prepare our sheet to go on the bracelet. So I'm going to trim each of these sheets in half. Okay. And I'm also going to trim along these sides here so that we're going to have a nice clean connection. This one's all ready to go. This one's already got a nice clean side on each. This one I'm going to trim too. And then once you've trimmed each one, figure out how you want to put them together. You know, colors and patterns, how you want it to work together. So I want this ginkgo piece to be in the middle. And so I'm going to bring these along the outside. Okay, and I'm just going to move this along here so you can see what I'm doing. And this is what our bracelet's roughly going to look like. So you can see that I want this to look like it's going out in different directions. So this was a radial pattern and so I want the spurts to go out in this direction and then on this one I want it to go out in this direction. Okay and now I don't want a straight line for each of these pieces so once you've figured out where you want it to go um, you're just going to take those pieces and keep them in the same order and just lightly overlap 
bring over your craft blade and I'm going to cut a wavy line and now you need to do that with the two pieces overlapping each other so that when you take away this bit it's going to fit in perfectly there we go. and that will um, distort the line where they join you can see that they're going to fit in much happier there okay and then you'll bring over the next one and repeat until you've got them all pieced together like this Okay, and you should get them joined together just like this. And you can see how lovely they look now. The seam isn't so obvious because we've done a nice squiggle pattern. And because they all have a crackle effect on them, the crackles will start to blend together and so it will blend that seam. And it will just give the um, illusion that it's actually blurring into each other. So now you want to bring over a plain piece of printing paper. And just use your fingers, and I've already rolled over this lightly just to smooth the seams together. But now you want to bring up your fingers, or a roller, it's completely up to you. And just smooth. Make sure that it is completely smooth and you can't see, feel a transition between them. Because this needs to be completely smooth. Now the nice thing about having the printing paper here is it's going to protect against dirt from your roller, which is a possibility. Uh, it's going to protect from smudging because sometimes when you're burnishing like this instead of rolling you can get smudges and so I highly recommend using some sort of barrier like plain printing paper when you're burnishing. Okay, Very easy, doesn't damage the clay at all, it protects it nicely, all good. Okay, Now I'm just going to pick this up. And I'm going to check the back side because I don't want to be able to see seams on the back side either. So even though it's not great looking, you want to smooth out the back as well because it needs to be one solid piece of clay. Because I don't want to put a backing on this because otherwise it's going to make it too thick. So if you're having trouble with this, you can always just pop a thin backing on. But I've already got my clay run out on my thicker setting, which is about four to five millimeters thick. And I want to put a backing on later once I've baked the first lot on the bracelet. And so putting a backing on right now is going to just complicate things. So if I can smooth this out and get rid of any seams, that will be best. Okay, and I'm running over. I can't feel any seams. I'm just busy looking as well to see if I can see any. Because sometimes you can't feel it, but you can see a line running through. So you can just lay the paper down where you need to. Quickly smooth with your finger and pick up to see if it's smoothed out. Okay. Mm. All smooth. You don't have to worry about this. This can look as dirty as you want. Doesn't have to look pretty at all right now. All you want is these pieces joined together. Now. I'll bring over my blank. Now this might be a little tricky because it might give me a little bit of problems. But I basically want that ginkgo in the middle. So I'm gonna I'm actually going to roll this over. So I'll start from the middle. And roll one way to create an impression, bring it back to the starting point and roll in the other direction. And this is because I don't want to cut out more clay than is needed because you can see there's a lot more clay here that I can use in other things. So I'll roll my bracelet over and then trim around it quite generously because I don't want to end up with too little clay. And then I can remove this and use this somewhere else. OK, 
Okay, and remember to put a fairly generous border of clay around where you've rolled your bracelet because that you want. You don't want to end up with something um, that is too small. Okay, and now a little bit of patience is required here. And now with bracelets that already have texture on them, they're not ideal, but um, you can avoid picking up a lot of that texture by not pressing too hard on them. Just gently press, and if your piece is thick enough, it won't pick up that texture through the front either. So there's no texture on there at all. The back will pick up the texture, but that's fine, because we're going to be putting a backing on. Okay, and then you want to take care of the edges. So just gently press the clay along the edges because I want to trim that off. And if you can, pinch it hard enough that you could possibly even break it off without using a blade. Because that I find is sometimes the cleanest way to break it off. So I'm just pinching along the edges and I'm going to set it down as well. And then once I've got it pinched, I can go with my blade and it will come off really easily without getting all upset with me or distorting or anything. There we go. And keep all of these bits. This crackle creates some really lovely leftovers. So I might do a video on that after I have finished these project tutorials. But definitely keep all those leftovers. They look so cool in um, other projects. Just continue pinching around the edge. And now this technique can be used on any bracelet blank. It doesn't matter what bracelet blank you're using. If you don't have a blank, you can always just cut out the clay to the right size um, and put it around a bottle of some sort. That also will work. And sometimes resting the bangle down so that it's flattening out this edge, it can really help. This is probably the most delicate part of the operation. Trimming this up correctly. And now once you've got most of the excess off like that, you can go into refining it. Now I can go with my blade and make sure that's all good. So you can see here where I've pinched it, that the edge is nice and thin and kind of beveled in. That's what I want. So I'm going to go around these other edges and just gently pinch so that it kind of bevels over the edge of the actual bracelet blank. And then I will trim with my blade and we'll get a much better finish rather than a sharp end to the veneer. And just make sure you don't have any white spots. If you have any, just gently stretch the veneer by pinching it. And this is going to look really nice. Okay, there you can see I have a slight white spot there. Just gently pinch it along the edge and you can easily get rid of that. any little bits that have stuck and that should be it. Then you want to go and just smooth. Um, this sort of clay isn't, the sort of clay that we're using here is basically somewhat half cured and so it's not going to crackle 
Ah, oh, excuse me, it's not going to pick up fingerprints, so you don't have to worry too much about them. But it is a good idea to still go back and gently smooth it. I'm just going to get rid of all those leftovers. Okay, and press lightly because you don't want it picking up that texture. Okay, so if you can find a bracelet blank that doesn't have a texture, that's ideal. But if you can't find one, that's fine. You just need to be a little bit more careful when you're applying your clay. Okay, and that is our bracelet. You can see that that pebble pattern hasn't actually appeared much on the edges here. That's fine. We're going to use that pebble pattern in our um, in our necklace. So you'll be able to see that there. But it's on the edges here, which is important because we're going to be using all three of these veneers in our necklace. So if the necklace is going to match, it has to have all of the veneers that the bracelet has. Okay, so I'm going to go and pop this bracelet now into the oven for a good 40 minutes at pretty much recommended temperature. Um, I'm going to rest it like this. It will sit just fine like that because we've trimmed the clay around the edges. Rest it on a piece of plain printing paper just in case the clay is touching the tile. Because if it is touching the tile, you want it to not have a shiny spot. So rest it on a piece of plain printing paper and put a plain piece of printing paper over the top and that will tint it, bake that for 40 minutes at pretty much recommended temperature and then we can apply the back. Okay, so this is just out of the oven and I have cooled it off. And so you can see that the colours do change a bit when you bake it, but not much. So I've cooled it off, so now we want to work this off of our bangle. There we are, should come off quite easily. There we are. So you can see what that looks like now. And you can see that we have a bit of a texture on the back, but there's not that much there. So I'll pop that off to the side and we'll prefer, prepare the backing. So we're going to have a bit left over from when we cut out our sheet. And so this is what I'm going to use uh, for our backing. So I'm just going to trim this section here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these two pieces together because I want this to be our middle pieces together and then I'll bring over this again trim that in half stick that on the ends here okay and now with this bracelet you want to make sure that this part over here is longer or wider than here so if you start off with this you're going to find that it's not going to wrap around the base here so just make sure that you have enough space to actually cover your bangle okay, then I'll bring over that plain printing paper again and I'll just burnish like before okay now that it's finished we finished burnishing it making sure that these pieces are nicely stuck together bring this over and now I've got a little bit of water on here which isn't good and I also want to put some bacon bond around the inside over here okay so I've dried the water because you can't have any of that sitting there and I'm bringing it over some bacon bond now this can be a little bit of a tricky task getting in here but just apply your liquid clay and I'm using bacon bond uh, mainly because it's sticky rather than runny it's kind of like a thick honey consistency and so when you smear it over the base of your bracelet or bead whichever whatever you're using 
um, it's not going to cause your clay to spill all over the place and slip and things. It's going to make the clay stick so long as you don't use too much of it. Whereas with other liquid clays it can really make your clay slip and slide all over the place and that can just add more problems rather than fix them. So just make sure you have enough liquid clay. And then just use your finger to gently rub that liquid clay around so that it's covering all of your surfaces. And try not to get it on the front because that can disrupt the texture on the front and cause some weird look. So just try to keep it on the back. Okay, now we're ready to apply the back. Now, if you've baked this right, you should be able to move it a bit. So I'm just going to move that a little bit so that I can slot this in. Okay, and then I'll just gently work up the side. Okay, and then I'm going to work up the other side. Okay, make sure that I have enough clay there. Looks like I might need to stretch it just a little to get it to fit. So let me just pull on that a little bit to get it fit. There we go. And I'm just going to firmly press that down so it doesn't move. I'm just making sure that I've got enough clay on the other side. If you don't have enough clay, you can always make separate sheets. You don't have to use the leftovers. You don't even have to use these leftovers. You could go and make a completely different veneer to go on the back if you want. It's just that I had these veneers pieces left over and so I thought that it would be a good way to use them up. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to trim away this excess so it's not flopping all over the place. Okay. The more excess clay you have flopping all over the place, uh, the harder it can be to get this all trimmed out nicely. Okay, and then just like you would if it was a bracelet blank, like we did before, gently pinch around the edges. And then you can rest that bracelet down while you do these edges. Now the trick is to do it gently because you have got a crackle here, and so the crackle can crack a bit. And so it's not as flexible as it usually would be, so you just need to be careful that you don't overbend it. And I'm going to bring over my blade and now we're working with clay here and so there's no metal blank involved here anymore so be careful that you don't slice the edge of your bracelet here because that's happened a few times to me okay and that's sliced cleanly keep all those little bits And don't leave any of the little bits on your tile because you can find that they love to stick to your bracelet and then you only find them later once they've become embedded into the bracelet and then you can't get rid of them. So any little bits that you shave off, stop and remove them from your work area. Okay, now we've fixed up the edges. We'll come back and refine them a little bit because I need to trim them just a little bit more. Now these sides are a little bit more tricky because you need to be careful that you don't slice through your clay but that you slice enough that you're getting rid of that extra clay. There we go. 
little bit on the other side. This is going to look really nice when it's finished. It's going to have a really kind of African effect to it, I think. There we go. Alright, now go around and press on it well. You want to make sure that this is stuck completely, the back end is stuck completely to your bangle. Make sure that you haven't got any little bits that have found their way onto your bangle, because that happens even if you're really careful. And press around these edges, make sure that it's nice and stuck on well. Because we're going to do a final trim, and then we're going to pop this in the oven again. And it's looking really nice in there. So hopefully you can see that, and then you can see the entire thing looks really nice. Okay. I'm just pinching it down here so that we can get a nice look on these edges. So I'm just pinching it around like I did with the metal base. And you can skip forward a little bit if, since I have shown you this bit a little bit, but for any of you that have just started, it's good for me to walk you through the entire process. Just making sure that I've pinched that well. And I'll go and trim. And you can see there that we have less of a white gap there, which is what I am trying to achieve. I'm trying to uh, get the seam to disappear a bit more. We're not going to completely get rid of this white area but we can get rid of it a little bit more. So I'll continue pinching around the edge. So this side I'll repeat the pinching again and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm happy with it. Okay, so that's the edge. Now just go with your finger and gently smooth that edge up. Don't pinch it so that it's coming right over. You just want to pinch it a little bit so that it's coming up against that edge and then smooth that with your finger. So you get a nice smooth seam. And I'll show you what this side looks like when we're finished. And then I'll show you the opposite side, which I won't have done. And you can see the difference. Because it's important that you join these two together in a way that looks professional. So here's the side if you just left it trimmed. Here's the side now that we have smoothed it off. So you'll do that on the edges over here and on this side. Okay, so I finished up the edges here. This is about as clean as I'm going to be able to get them. And there's the edges in there as well. And you can see that the pattern inside here looks really nice and adds depth to the pattern on the outside here. And so it looks really nice. So I'm quite happy with how this turns out. Um, I'm going to pop this in the oven for another 14 minutes at Primo's recommended temperature to finish it off and then basically we'll just need to give it a quick buff with some renaissance wax there won't be any sanding involved so long as you've made sure that you've smoothed off these edges properly but we don't want to sand because we will remove this surface effect that we have here so there's no sanding in this project which is excellent it's always great when you can avoid sanding and then we can call this project done and then in the next video I will show you how to create the necklace and I'll most likely be posting that this week as well. So go pop this in the oven and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay so here it is now that it is out of the oven and you can see that that's nicely baked inside there which is excellent. So now we're ready to buff. Now I've got a handheld rotary tool so that I can show you guys how to do this because I think it's about time that I show you guys how to buff on a video. Um, this is a handmade buffing wheel that I made. You can buy these on my shop, Jessima Design, and they will fit a Dremel and this is another rotary tool and you can see here what it is. So they will fit basically any rotary tool. So. I'll just switch this on on the lowest speed and we'll start buffing. Okay. 
Now it is important to point out that when you're buffing, you must have a very light touch. You just want it to brush your piece. If you press too hard, your wheel's going to stop. And this will basically stop, will happen with any buffing wheel. So watch this. If I press too hard, you'll see that it stops. So you just want to have it like this, not like that. If you press down, it will stop because the felt's going to spin on the wheel that we have, that I have here. So don't press too hard because then it will just stop it from buffing at all. So I'll continue buffing this because I want to give it a pretty good buff and it's going to take a little while to do that. And uh, I'm going to also buff inside here and I'll show you that. Very easy. And I'm just going to give a light buff in there. And now, actually, we're going to be putting Renaissance wax on this, so I'm not going to continue buffing. So I'll just bring over the wax. And you can leave it the way it is if you don't have Renaissance wax, that's fine. I wouldn't put a varnish on though, because it can look tacky. So I would just take an old cloth, I'm using a dried out wet wipe here. And just put on a nice layer. I'm not going to put it on the back, uh, because... That's going to be wearing against the skin and the Renaissance wax uh, can feel, it doesn't feel as nice as the raw clay on its own. So I tend not to varnish the back unless I absolutely need to. And the alcohol links will be just fine. So you can see as I'm rubbing here, I'm not getting any of the ink transferring onto my wet wipe. Okay, now once I've transferred it, I'll bring over the buffing wheel and we'll buff this. And you'll see how nice and shiny it is. Now it is harder to use this tool when you're just using it freehand personally because I find that I tend to press a little bit too hard. I'm used to it sitting on a stand where the stand holds it for me and then I press my piece up against this. So if you have a stand to hold your Dremel on, I highly recommend it. It means that you can do drilling accurately, it means that um, sanding's a bit easier and it just means that um, it's a little bit more stable and you're handling your piece rather than the tool which is a lot easier to work with and now I highly recommend a Dremel as a rotary tool because this one's speed is um, a lot faster than I would like it ideally it's okay but a Dremel if you haven't got a rotary tool and you're looking into buying one buy a Dremel it's absolutely perfect and that's the one that I typically use I have this one extra because my dad allowed me to borrow it and so I was able to use this on the video, but it's not as nice as my Dremel. So if you're going to buy one, buy a Dremel. It's excellent. And it's not too expensive either. So I'll pop that over to the side. And you can see here that even though it is a handheld tool and it's a little harder to work with than one that is um, positioned on something to keep it stable, it does a really good job of buffing, especially with that Renaissance wax. The Renaissance wax really brings out a nice shine. It will make your colours deeper, it makes them richer, and it just looks really nice. And now this area over here is a bit smoother. This crackle wasn't as uh, deep and coarse as the ones on the side here. So you can see that your shine is going to vary depending on how smooth your crackle was. And then on the inside, I'm just going to leave that plain. I don't want that to be shiny because when you wear it, just bring that over, my wrist is tiny, but there you are. When you're wearing it, it feels much better to have just raw clay against your skin, so long as it's not rough or anything like that. So I smoothed off my piece before putting it in the oven, so it's a nice 
a warm smooth surface to put your wrist against and then you've got a nice shiny outside so that is basically it for today's tutorial I had a lot of fun showing you guys this and this is just one way that you can apply the veneers you could apply them you could apply just one veneer as you can see this one is quite different and it is just as effective I haven't put the backing on it yet um, I'll do that eventually but you can see that it is just as effective and depending on your taste you might find that this is more effective or you might find this is more effective it really depends on you um, so you can use one veneer or you can use a patchwork of veneers which is what I'm going for for this one because I'm going to be using a necklace with it but again using one veneer is just as effective and remember you can put on any bracelet form you want here's another bracelet form that is really nice um, I need to put a backing on that one too but again you can use it on any bracelet you form you want okay and so that is it for today's tutorial I do hope that you found it helpful do tune in for next week's um, no actually not next week's tutorial sometime this week I'll be posting the tutorial on how to create the necklace to go with this and so uh, I'm looking forward to showing you guys that and if you wanted to buy the buffing tool that I showed in this tutorial they are on my Etsy shop Jessima Design I'll provide a link to those in the links below and if you enjoyed this tutorial please do comment below I really enjoy reading your comments um, I love your support and I love it when you like what I present and please do leave a like and if you want to support me I am on Patreon you can have a look there I have videos posted every single month and multiple reward tiers so you can choose how you want to support me if you do want to support me and that is always very helpful and as always I'll see you in the next tutorial bye for now